Yes, I'm glad. One of the characteristics of the Islam religion practice is to be really much. This word, a Chinese word, it means uh, uninterrupted. Uninterrupted practice. We have our mindful breath, we have our mindful steps, and these two aspects of our practice help us to practice throughout the day, whatever we are doing. If we are doing a physical work, a physical action, like closing the door, turning on the light, breaking the leaves. Our breathing is always there to accompany us. So we do not forget our practice during the day. And that is the training. We need to train ourselves every day. And as well as the mindful breathing, and the mindful steps, we have the gathas, the little verses to remind us. And whenever you use a little verse, you always follow your breathing. So, uh, for instance, uh, water comes from high mountain sources. Water comes from Deep in the earth, breathe out. Water flows and flows for us. Breathe in. My gratitude is overflowing. Breathe out. So while you are uh, giving your full attention to the water which you are turning off, at the same time you are following your breathing which keeps you really there with what you are doing. Um, this is the, the, the practice, the steps, the breath, the garters that we really need because our world is full of fear and our deepest aspiration is to bring the gift of non-fear into the world. And now we have three months. Three months of coming back to ourselves, calming ourselves, making ourselves still. And with the practice, we have the privilege of those three months. And we don't want to waste that privilege. Maybe there are people in the world who really long to have that privilege, but they, they are not able. They have to work in order to take care of their families. And we want to practice not only for ourselves, but also for those people who, who want to practice, but uh, <coughs> want to come to Plum Village for three months, or one of the Plum Village centers, but they cannot. So we practice for them too. So during this uh, three months, we have an opportunity and uh, after the three months when we may have to go back to work or we may have to go out and lead retreats, the, re the resources that we have laid down in our mind during the three months can continue. We don't have to stop. Because while we are raking leaves, while we're sweeping the floor, we have followed our breathing. While going from the meditation hall to the dining room, we have followed our breathing and our steps. And so that's become a deeper part of us. 
and then we have to go to the airport or the railway station. We will continue to do that. But if we do not, uh, during the three months break, repeat, uh, devote ourselves, dedicate ourselves to the uninterrupted practice of uh, breathing and walking and using the gutters, then when we have to leave the three month retreat, we will have no resources to take uh, to take with us. So this practice has been handed down to us by, by our teacher, Tai. And by doing it, we are continuing Tai in the world. Our difficulties are not uh, great, like the difficulties that Tai had. Still, we can be carried away. I think I developed this practice of uninterrupted breathing, walking mindfully, in order to overcome, to help overcome the difficulties that I had to face. But uh, we don't have those difficulties to face. I use this practice in order to transform the painful feeling into the pleasant feeling, the feeling of peace, the feeling of being in touch with the wonders of life. But uh, we are not faced with these painful feelings that I have to go through. We are faced more with our neutral feelings. That is our feelings of not really being present. We are not suffering. So we are not feeling happy, but we are not really there. And the practice of the mindful breathing, the mindful steps, and the gathers is to bring us back into the world of wonders, the world that can nourish us, that can heal us, which is present all the time, but we are not present for it. So whenever we take a, a mindful step and the sole of our foot is truly in contact with the earth, we are present. And at that moment, we can begin to be in touch with the wonders of life. Because life has its suffering. But life is wonderful. It is a miracle. Master Lin Chi said that uh, every step is a walking on earth is a miracle. So when we walk, we can remind ourselves. Each step is, as we breathe in, a miracle. Each step is a miracle. Each step is nourishing. It's nourishing me. I need that spiritual nourishment. And when I am nourished, when I have practiced each step is nourishing, then healing can take place in my body and my mind. Our body needs healing, our mind needs healing. Sometimes we feel very well in our body, but our mind still needs healing. And after that, each step 
is freedom. So you have the um, you have, uh, in Vietnamese very easy because you have monosyllabic language, but in English you have to say each step is a miracle. <laughs> each step is breathe in, a miracle breathe out because your out breath is longer. Each step, no, it, maybe every step is better. Every step, because then you get three steps. Every step is miracle. Every step is nourishing. Every step is healing. So your steps go along with the words. And those words are not thinking, those words are bringing you back to the present moment. Every step is freedom. At that point, you are free from the past, free from the future. And that is why we need to practice uninterrupted to, to really uh, be there for the miracles of life that nourish us and heal us. And not only nourish us, but nourish, nourish the world. You can be sure that when we practice walking meditation together, <coughs> the nourishing and healing energy goes into each of us, but it also goes into the world. <laughs> On the uh, right-hand side of the board, if you read uh, Chinese, uh, we have the thank you, dear sisters, for writing for me. I can't write Chinese. We have the characters uh, Yu and uh, and you want peace, you make peace. This calligraphy we used to have in the lower hamlet uh, in the Tindu uh, Nenhong. I don't know where it's gone now, but it's not there anymore. Uh, calligraphy was written for Thai by uh, some, I think, Taiwanese uh, master, I'm not sure. So why do we have that calligraphy? Why did we have that calligraphy in the lower hand leg? There was a time when, uh, many times, but one of the many times when Pai was in a very difficult situation as a bodhisattva was in Singapore in 1976, when there was the uh, World Conference of Religions for Peace or something like that. And Pai was present in that World Conference. Before Pai had come uh, to Singapore, Pai knew nothing about uh, what was happening to the Vietnamese refugees who were stranded on the ocean called the boat people. But uh, when I came to Singapore for this conference, uh, I uh, found out about the situation. And so he, uh, he announced to the conference that there were thousands, maybe hundreds, of boat people stranded on very inadequate uh, boats on the southern seas, the Bay of Thailand, the Bay of Thailand. And the Thai deep wish was to be able to rescue these boat people. However, the 
government, including the government of uh, Singapore, did not want to have a lot of refugees. Do you uh, do you feel something familiar in this uh, story <coughs> in the Mediterranean and the refugees from uh, Africa? It's not. It's going to continue because uh, there will be more and more refugees over time. Now we go back to 1976. So these uh, refugees were being attacked by pirates. They were not allowed to land because people don't want uh, refugees in their country. And uh, so the boats were pushed back to sea, even though the boats did not, uh, were, not uh, were broken down. So I wanted to uh, to do something about this situation, and Tai and Sister Jacob and their friends they managed to hire four boats, two large boats that could go all the way to Australia and the island of Guam to bring the refugees to those places, and two small boats which could bring provisions to the larger boats. And uh, so they, uh, they began their rescue operation. But when the Singapore government heard about the rescue operation, they were not happy, and they uh, told they, ex wanted, they gave the order for expelling Kai from Singapore so that he could not continue with his program of protest. So they told Kai you had to leave in 36, 36 hours. But Kai could not leave. He had 800 people in one of the boats. He could not uh, speak like that. And that was the time when I had to practice uninterrupted breathing and walking. And I stayed up all night to practice this. And he used the, the words which we have on the right-hand side of the board. Desire peace, want peace, make peace. That, that it means to make the foundation. You have to be the foundation for the peace that you want. And uh, with that, uh, I re-established peace. And I saw a way. He had to ask the help of the French ambassador in Singapore, who had been a very good support uh, for Thai. The few refugees they brought in, uh, the ambassador allowed them to, late at night, to climb over the fence of the embassy garden and uh, stay there until the police came and rescued them and put them in prison. But that was much better than they pushed out to sea and having to drown. So the ambassador had already helped and I decided to ask the ambassador to intervene so that I could stay for 10 more days in order to be able to to, for the program rescuing refugees to be able to continue and to take the 800 refugees they had to Australia. So it's uh, this is an uh, encouragement for us when uh, when we when we want peace we we practice uninterrupted. 
as students of Thai, we can, we can do that. And when we are confronted by the views from uh, the Middle East, from the Ukraine, the best thing we can do is to establish that inner peace that will uh, spread out to those around us and then spread, spread out to others. Peace in oneself, peace in the world. <laughs> Especially when we have the mental formation, because we practice not just with our awareness of our body, or of our bodily actions, but we also practice awareness of our mental formation. So then we also need to come back and take care and establish peace in our mental formation, establish peace in our feelings and in our perceptions. So after, uh, after Pai had spent the night in uh, uninterrupted uh, practice, which, by the way, I continued to do when he went back to France for the rest of his life. Uh, I wrote a poem, which I would like to share with you. I'm not quite sure if I translated it correctly. Uh, I translate the title as Ladder to the Festival of Stars. I don't know gay cow woman got translated ladder to home. Better than bridge. There is the Wudong tree. Anybody from China who's seen the Wudong tree? Anybody from North Vietnam who's seen the gay Wudong? Huh? I kind of gay no talk to you. For the root temple, they have this uh, oh, no, I didn't know that. No, maybe I see it. But, uh, there is the Wudong tree where the phoenix can align. The phoenix uh, is a uh, a mythical bird, I think, from Egypt, behind. And it seemed that the phoenix lived for a very long time, and then came and burnt itself on the altar in Egypt. And after it had burnt itself, the out of the ashes, a new phoenix was born, and the new phoenix um, had a lot of energy, a lot of good energy, and then started its life again, <laughs> not doing the same thing. So when I see there is the Wudong tree where the people stand alive, I think that the phoenix must be, must be tight. Because Thai was in great pain when he heard that he could not help the boat people. 
And then after practicing to establish peace and clarity and knowing what to do, it's like having been destroyed, you are able to live again, you are yeah, with new invigorated energy. Someone, and I think that the Buddha on tree may be the uh, ambassador who helped. Someone is standing there for, for deep love. So there are people around us who, who have enough love, who have enough compassion. And when we feel that uh, we are at a loss, we don't know what to do, then we need to find, to remember someone who has that deep love in order to be able to, to drink the, 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 the nectar from that person's practice and presence. And I think all of us uh, have, have people with we feel that uh, we can receive from that love. Even if it means uh, you have to go to the, or you have to uh, make a telephone call to the other side of the world, uh, then uh, you should do that. Laws and regulations are like an iron, are usually often like an iron grill that imprison people in a lifetime something pain. The country that makes the law that uh, refugee boats cannot land, uh, that is like uh, imprisoning a prison for people so that they suffer incredibly. So there are regulations and laws like that. But, but there is also the heart of compassion. Nyam I. Nyam, we didn't write. Nyam is the, uh, the, the, um, the human, the human. I is love, uh, humanity. There is the heart of humanity, the heart of compassion. It is there in all of us. And it is like the hand of the Buddha. So where there is, a, where there is compassion, where there is humanity, there is the hand of the Buddha that can destroy the hell room destroy the pain and shatter the darkness of anxiety. This morning, the sunshine in the town is limitless. After having practiced all night, there is a, a new day. When we wake up in the morning, when I also wrote the poem, waking this morning, I see the blue sky. This is how I practiced in, in France when he was still taking care of the people. To wake up in the morning and to realize the wonders of life that we have. A dove soars in the sky overhead. I remember you, your goodness and your honesty. I think it must be the you is the uh, French ambassador. Your smile refreshing, wonderful like cool water. Little children remember people as the flower remembers the sunshine, as water remembers the source 
Once the mind is made up, forces of violence cannot change it. The determination that we have to help, it is not a change by the by the, the violence of regulation. A ladder rises from the caves of hell. Reaches the sky and starts the festival of of stars. Uh, when we look up, uh, we're lucky in uh, Plum Village. We can look up the, the night sky and we can see the star, and uh, that we call the festival of the star. Actually, they're there all the time, but they'll be long in the night. Where is this the Mopfu? It's a So please uh, close your eyes. You don't need to listen to translation, huh? I mean, uh, you can't. You can't go to the pub. So, so uh, just close your eyes. And enjoy the music. Một cây cầu 
the mind is made up, forces and violence cannot change it. We engage ourselves as we rise the storm waves and let that out to the earth. So we hear a sound of the bell. Give some gas. This uh, rain still dreams of We shall be looking at the practice of ethics. And one of Bhante's deep wishes was to be able to have a global spirituality in the world, a global ethics and to find what it is that Buddhism can contribute to global humanity. So we want to look again at those teachings I gave on the, the Buddhist contribution to the global ethics. 
because uh, we feel that at this time there is nothing more needed than than this. So in 1993, I attended the Parliament of the World's Religions in Chicago. And uh, this Parliament of World Religions the theologian, the, the Swiss theologian, they wanted to, to find out from all the different uh, religions in the world, what do we have in common? And they came to the conclusion that we know that our religions, ethical traditions, offer different uh, bases for what is helpful or unhelpful for the humankind. However, we have to let the world know what are the things which we hold in common. <clears throat> they came up with four things. The first is not killing, commitment to a culture of non-violence and respect for life. The second thing, not stealing, a commitment to a culture of solidarity. That is where we, one nation helps the other nation rather than trying to compete against the other nation and a just economic order. Third thing, not lying. <clears throat> Commitment to a life of truth and a culture of tolerance. And the fourth thing, <clears throat> no sexual misconduct. Commitment to uh, equal rights between men and uh, women is included in that. That is just four things. The fifth thing about uh, not consuming uh, drugs and alcohol is not uh, agreed on by the So, uh, now we can have. Can you see? Well, maybe we should write that in English so as we don't read Chinese. <laughs> can everyone see? So we go back over here, huh? This is what we've already thought about. This is not the separate from, from this, huh? This is this Desire can be good, right? desire for people. Does it not say in the seventh of the 14 mindfulness trainings to be able to give rise to uh, 
any situation huh? give rise to something huh? what these um, but not but anyway that is the spirit of the seventh mindfulness dream that we should in any situation be able to be in touch with the wonders of life and this is something that Pai did and this is something that as Pai's disciples do they also do so this is how in the East, in China, in Vietnam, in Korea, and Japan, I don't know, over there, that side of the world, we look at uh, ethics. So this first word is uh, Luan. it means, uh, it means a norm. It means a norm. It means a uh, relationship between human beings. Normally, uh, we would say, we would say the uh, human, the human relationships between, between us, the norms, the standards we have when we relate to each other, so that we, uh, we can bring happiness in our relationships and we can relieve the suffering in our relationships because we are always related uh, to each other and uh, in our practice of ethics that is uh, a practice of relating to each other in the in the daily activities the daily life so we can translate this as norm if you like um, But also, I think, a human relationship norm of... we we'll put the word nyan in a human relationship. So we take a little bit further. We don't just relate to other human beings, but we also relate to... Uh, Okay, that now, right? We also relate to the, the animal, the veg, vegetation, and the, uh, the mineral. But uh, here we, that is basically, it is basically you. And li, yeah? Li, you mean, um, it means principles. Principles. There are certain principles that we follow. This the word Dao. <laughs> this word uh, means the way, the path. It also means uh, the way of uh, enlightenment. So when we talk about um, <coughs> somebody becoming enlightened, we say they that now they realize the way. So the way. Now I have a path, I have nothing to fear. Way of and this word is uh, but you morality virtuous behavior. 
So this way of enlightenment is based on uh, on virtue. Virtue of Duk also has the meaning of the power, the power of virtue. And uh, I talk the, the three powers of uh, virtue as uh, cutting off the afflictions, the power of uh, of love and gratitude, and the power of understanding. <laughs> three powers. So this is the uh, this is the way of talking about ethics in, in famous other related countries. So if we now go to uh, India, because uh, the Buddha teachings are not in, the, not in Chinese, but in Sanskrit, uh, then we have the word Shila. Shila also means customs. With um, ethics, we rely on our own awareness of the suffering. That is very clear in the published tradition, aware of the suffering brought about. I am determined to and not to, but we are also guided by what has been handed down by our ancestral teachers. For instance, the five mindfulness training, they, uh, we practice them with our awareness of the suffering, but if the ancestral teachers had not told us what those five trainings were, we would not, our mind would be too dispersed, would not be directed for us to be able to be aware of suffering in a certain area where suffering arises. So we very much need the customs and the traditions that have been handed down to by us or by our ancestors. But as the Buddha said in the Kalama, uh, sutta, uh, we only apply what has been handed down when we see its benefit for us. So that is where our awareness uh, comes in, when we see the benefit of what our ancestors handed down and we decide we will continue to practice that. We see the benefit of protecting life. We see the, the, the calamity of not uh, protecting life. And that is something we can do in our daily life, protecting life. So sila also means customs, it means virtue. And you heard about the six uh, paramita, the six practices that take us to the other shore. And one of them is uh, is uh, shila, shila paramita, the practice of morality that takes us to the other shore. We don't uh, we want to go to the other shore as a bodhisattva, we don't know the practice of the mindfulness. So, uh, in the, in the uh, suttas, it is uh, described as uh, 
Edible food, then what? Sense impression food, volition food, this is volition, this is intention. So the practice of morality begins with our intention, begins with our mind, but it is expressed in our speech and in our bodily action. So the mind is the root, our way of thinking is the root, and that root, uh, what we have the, the sikapana, this is Pali, this is central. Sikapana. Sita means training. These are steps of the training. The mindfulness trainings, I call them. We have the mindfulness trainings to guard our actions of body and speech. But if we do not take care of our jatana, of our intentions, of our mind, what our mind is doing, then that will be expressed in our actions of body and speech. So the, the, the mindfulness trainings, normally they don't talk so much about what you do with your mind. For instance, if you have a dream that you uh, kill somebody, one mom once had a dream that he uh, killed one of his fellow monks. He was very afraid. He thought that he had done something terrible. So he went to Upali and he said, Upali, last night I had a dream that I killed my uh, brother monk. So do I have to, uh, yeah, do I have to confess and go back to their life? And Upali said, no. no because uh, things that arise in your mind, uh, they do not, uh, they do not do the, the damage, but uh, they can do damage. And therefore we have to take very good care of how we think. Mm. Although the precept may not tell us, Take care of how you think, except in the first mindfulness training when we had, I am determined not to 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 um, commend any act of killing in my thinking and in my way of life. But uh, when we take that is something internally that we do. Tai has uh, told us that. A compassionate thought can heal us, and the thought of a hatred can can make us sick. So the sikapali usually they are talked about as uh, guarding to guard our actions of body and speech. So even if we have been thinking in a negative way, we are. We can be careful not to let it uh, go into our words and our bodily actions with the help of the priesthood. So, if we listen to them.
So we have three trainings. We have the training of Sheila, morality, the training of concentration, and the training of insight. And those three things <laughs> enter all. There is another way of expressing morality, concentration, and insight, and that is mindfulness, concentration, and insight. This means that mindfulness and morality are not two separate things. They contain each other. As we said before, morality, ruling, is for bringing happiness into our human relationships, reducing suffering in our human relationships, so that is, uh, when we practice mindfulness, that is what we are doing. We are bringing more happiness, true happiness, and reducing the suffering. When we reduce the suffering, we have, uh, we have the happiness. So, if you say that uh, mindfulness is not a a tool, in a way, is is correct. But on the other hand, we we probably come to the practice of mindfulness because we want to suffer less. It's not some kind of indifference that we don't mind suffering. We don't we don't need happiness. We just want to practice mindfulness. The reason we want to practice mindfulness is to reduce our suffering. And therefore our suffering is very helpful because it reminds us to practice mindfulness. But we know that when we reduce our own suffering, we also reduce the suffering of those around us. And when we have understood our own suffering, we also understand the suffering of those around us. So in a way we could say that mindfulness is a, a means for us to, to reduce suffering and to bring more, more happiness. But it is not a means uh, to make more money or to kill more people or so um, Thay has told us that we have to be careful in the West because we have the tendency to materialize things, uh, not to use mindfulness as a means to having more material uh, benefits, like uh, making more money. Because somebody could discover that, or oh, when I'm mindful, and when I uh, when I practice concentration and mindfulness, I do things more effectively. And so, when I want to uh, make more money, be more effective in making money, then uh, I can use mindfulness and concentration. That is the. Uh, mindfulness that has become divorced from morality. So uh, that is not the kind of mindfulness that we want to bring into the world. So we have seen uh, today, maybe, that we have a deep commitment 
uh, during this three month retreat to practice uninterruptedly, really to breathe and to walk and use the garden. We could also say to chew, to chew up our food, but then you can accompany that with gardens and your breathing too. So we have that uh, commitment, and we see that that uh, commitment is, is connected to our practice of morality, our practice of the five mindfulness training, the 14 mindfulness training, the 10 knowledge precepts, the 348 big shuni precepts, which are already guard our bodies and our speech. All are based, uh, based in mindfulness. So we shall not only be learning about uh, about ethics, about the Buddhist contribution, but we shall also be practicing uh, ethics by way of practicing mindfulness. We're very fortunate that we have each other to support us in the practice. Without, uh, I think that the one uh, thing that I, that I touch the earth, I would make the deep uh, commitment. May we, as a Sangha, be able to bring the Buddhist contribution to a global ethic and global spirituality into the world. So we continue that commitment of Thai. Yeah. 